What if you're selling courses or products or maybe tickets to a webinar or events that you hold, but you don't want to use WooCommerce because you don't want to go down the whole WooCommerce product route or other membership plugins. You just want to sell courses or tickets. You know, you want people to be able to book one, two or five people for your event. Maybe you should consider this free plugin. It's called Accept Stripe Payments and you can get it for free from the WordPress repository. Now, I want to make absolutely clear this is not a sponsored video. The plugin, the developers have not contacted me. We used this for a recent client project where they wanted to sell tickets for their events. And basically this ticked all the boxes. This is an actual course page from the client's website. And we've used that plugin to generate these buttons for you to go and purchase tickets. Over here, it says out of stock because basically there's no more tickets available. This was an example one, by the way, just to show the client how it works. So when all of your tickets that you've said are available for that event are sold out, it will say out of stock. Here we have three dates. So basically, I'm going to show you how you would create this. This button says book for May the 21st, 2 to 5 p.m. You click it and it opens up a pop up. And this is all within the plugin. So there's the event for May. There's 12 tickets available. If I was to go and type in, say, 14, it's going to say, nope, you can't have that many. If I go and change that to a five and I'm going to book for two people, five times 500 pounds, you get the total. Maybe it's five for uh, single people. So you get the total there. Or maybe it's just for one person. And you go and enter in your details, name, email. And you can have other custom fields available as well, all within the plugin, right? You don't have to start installing extra plugins. You can add these custom fields in. Maybe you want to collect the address or dietary requirements. Go and pop in your card or debit card. Hit accept. Email goes to them. Email goes to you. And that's it. So there was no need for you to do a full-blown WooCommerce product or, you know, membership plugins or anything like that. Because you're just trying to sell tickets for people to attend your event. And obviously you would contact them later on with further details of the link for logging in or webinars or whatever. So that was using this free plugin. Let's now go into the setting. When you've installed a plugin, you will have products. And this is where you go and add in your products, add new products. And we'll get onto this in a moment. If there's been any orders made, you'll see them here with the details and the payments, the name, the email. If you want to apply coupons, you can do that as well. You do have some add ons and I will quickly show you them, but I didn't need to worry about any of these. So if you feel like you need to go a step further with the plugin, you could do so. But the key bit is the settings. And believe me, once you've installed it, it does not take long for you to get set up. Go and decide on your checkout result page. So when you install it, you will have a checkout result page added to your pages. Go in and edit it. Put whatever you want in there. You might say thank you. You might say keep a lookout on your junk or your spam mail because there will be a confirmation email in there. You can provide them other details. You can even provide them like an upsell product or something else. The products page, if you are going to have a separate one, you can do that. But as you can see with my client's page over here, we just added in a button that went to every single product. So if you did want to have a products page that showcased it, so you might have a shop template or something like that, where you're going to go and drop the products in, Go for it, but you can actually keep it really simple for yourself with a button and we will get onto that. What is your currency? The text you put here, like buy now, you can change per product. So look over here, it says book for that date. So I don't have to have like tabs and go, right, I'm going to have to have a button and I'm going to have to put a headline text next to it. No, you can actually modify the text of the button. So if you want to just have buy now, you can. But for every individual product, you can fine tune that. You don't have to change much on here. I mean, look, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? You know, what is the default country? You might put United Kingdom, you might put United States or just leave it blank. You know, do you need to show the state field or not? And obviously, you're going to have to go and pop in your live Stripe keys that you would get from your Stripe account. And, you know, that's not difficult to get either. OK, so. In terms of setting this up, when you compare it to WooCommerce products where you got your payment gateway, then you got this, then you got to think about your shipping, your tax, and you got to go through all these screens, even though you might only be selling a downloadable or a virtual product like an event or, you know, like a course where uh, you attend it online and you talk to them and they talk to you. Why do you have to start worrying about going through all the shipping tabs and stuff like that? So this keeps it really, really simple. So that was the very basic general settings. Then the email settings, well, this is even easier. 
What are the emails? When a purchase is made, who's going to get notified from your business? Do you want it to come to you or to a member of your team? Obviously, the customer will get an email as well, and you can modify what are the details that they will get. And look, again, it's really simple. With WooCommerce, I get a little bit annoyed with how many emails there are, and you can almost ignore most of them. But for anyone that's not used to WooCommerce, they go in and they go, what? There's like 12 different email layers and they have to, they feel like they've got to go through every single one. This does keep it really, really simple. The advanced settings allow you to fine tune even further. So number of decimals, make sure you've created a terms and conditions page, go and drop the URL in over here, go and enable it. And if you click this, you'll see down here, we got, I accept the terms and conditions. You click it and in another window, it would have opened that up for them to go and agree to it. And when we go to the capture tab, they do make a recommendation that you do have capture enabled so that when people are making a payment, capture is going to basically just check they're not a bot, even though we know that bots can still sometimes get around it. But that's not going to take you too long to set up. Now let's go and create a product. You could duplicate an existing product or just create one from scratch. What you want to do is go and give it a title, give it a description. But what I will say to you is that if you're going to follow this kind of plan whereby you're going to have just the button, you don't really need to worry about the description because this is like a container with a headline text and then I've dropped in the button. But it won't be a bad idea to go and stick in the same description here. But if you're going to go down this route that I'm going to show you, you can just pop in a very short description. However, if you were going to have like a product page, then having a proper description is a good idea. You then decide on the price. Let's go and set this to be £99 for now. And I'm going to set the currency to be uh, Great British Pounds. Now, we are going to come back to that, OK? Because if there was going to be no variation, so you need to buy this product or this ticket or this course and the price is 99 there is no levels or different number of people, quantities or anything like that. You leave that as it is. However, if you are going to have variation, you need to set that to be zero. So let's go and add in our variation. We're going to create a group. I'm going to call it event tickets, single tickets, and I'm just going to pop in 99. We'll then hit add variation, two tickets, and we're going to pop it on for 179. And you can add in as many variations as you want, and you can also delete them. I'm going to allow the users to select their quantity, obviously, because we've got variation there. And I'm going to set that to be a one. So if I change that to be a two, that would mean you have to buy two single tickets, which doesn't make sense at all. But maybe you want them to buy a minimum amount. So I'm going to set it to one. I'm also going to enable stock control and I'm going to say we've got 100 of these available. You know, it doesn't matter how many single or two tickets you sell. The total number sold cannot exceed 100. If you are going to have any shipping tax costs or whatever, go and fill it in. If there are no shipping, leave it blank. And I, and I know I just said earlier. With WooCommerce, you've got to go through all of that and you're going to go, yeah, but it's now here. It's not that difficult. And once you've done one, you just duplicate it and modify the title, modify the price, because it might be that you're going to maintain the same variations or the same group. If you want them to have access to another product, so it doesn't matter, they get that and something else, you could add that in. Oh, you're going to have a product thumbnail. I mean, look, thank you, Paige. Now, We've already set the checkout result page, so I don't need to worry about that because in the settings, I've kind of said this is what it is, okay? So I could leave a lot of that blank, but this is the really cool bit, the appearance. Imitating what I did on the other side, I'm going to say that is my button text. So even though my settings say buy now, I'm going to say for this product, that is what I want to say. So let's say I'm going to create this for an event that reoccurs every two or three months. I could just go and create one product and then keep duplicating it. And then all I do is modify the button text. And I now know that when you buy that, that is for that event. And when you buy that, that is for that event. And you could have 20 tickets for one product and 50 tickets for another product because maybe the event is being held in a different location or you've got more resources. So you have full on control over that. But this is the bit that's really important. Go and give your button a CSS class name and I'm going to call it my custom style one. OK, make sure you do that. And then I'm going to click show button only because you might have noticed or not that if you scroll up over here, you have a short code. That is the short code that you're going to show on your page 
basically for the button. And if you show that short code, you're going to get the full blown description. Now, let's say I've got this product and I'm going to show it uh, with three different dates. Do I really want the description repeated three times every time you add that button? So here's the trick. Like I said, you get your container, you get your headline, you get your text, and then you just show the button. It makes it more consistent, efficient, nicer to look at, especially when you get to the mobile. And then I'm going to say display the order total. So if you're picking variations, obviously I do want to show the total. Uh, I'm going to disable coupons because I'm not enabling them. If you were enabling them, you would go and create your coupon over there and enable it. And I'm not showing any custom field, like I'm not asking you for your dietary requirements or anything like that. So again, I'm going to disable it. And because I've already entered in my Stripe keys on my settings, I don't want to have a different Stripe setting. Now, let's just think about this. Your website sells courses, but you've got five tutors. All of the money could go to one Stripe account and then it's divvied out. Or maybe each product is a different tutor and they have their own Stripe. Just ponder that for a moment. Multi-vendor course selling is now available for you if you wanted to go down that road. Great, we're all done. We're going to hit publish or update, then go and grab the short code. It's going to have text, images, whatever you want. Like I said, you could just shove it in a container. We're going to grab the short code widget, drop that in. And inside of here, I'm now going to drop that in. And there is our button. And remember, if I had not ticked the box for show the button only, we would have got all of the text as well. Now, the button styling is not great at all. OK, but this is where you need to now utilize the CSS class. Remember, we gave it the name. I think it was my class buttons, my class style one. Go to the advanced tab, go to custom CSS and drop in this code. And I will leave this in the video description. And you have a version for the standard color and obviously the hover color as well. And you can see the details there for what you want to change, where it's the font size, the font weight. You know, if you want to add in a bit of transform as well, you can do the padding the border radius, maybe you want to make it more rounder like that, you can do. So when I now click that, basically it's bringing up the pop-up, we've got our tickets, you can see it's got the double O or the zero pounds, but look, it does say 99. We change that to a five, the price will change. We said there was 100, so if I go to 120, it's not going to allow that. Um, now this is using the drop down, so I probably didn't mention that, but when you get to choose your variation, you can decide if it's going to be like a select check not select sorry drop down select a uh, checkbox or a radio button but you go and enter in your details and you purchase and it's a really good plugin and we used it for a client website and i feel like it just deserved a video on how to use it and like i said they did not ask for this this is not sponsored no one said go and do a video there's probably going to be some people out there that go oh, i really hate this i don't like it fine go and stick it in the comments there's lots of other tools and solutions that you can use if you don't want to go down the full blown WooCommerce product route, but this has definitely got legs for what it can do. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. See you soon.